Alrighty then. Let's banter for a bit before we officially start. Like what we usually do with the MBS show. <laughs> oh, okay, I'm so yeah, I, 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 I look nervous. Pardon? Sorry. <laughs> no, I'm. I'll, truth be told, I'm nervous with every public prison. It's just part of. Part of the... they, there's a reason to say death and public speaking are the two greatest fears. Oh, true that, true that. But uh, for me, it's the messing up of stuff. Like I don't want to oh. mess up, especially with you guys around. I, 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 I hmm. technically it's my okay. perfectionist. We... <laughs> well, well, now, oh, perfectionist, we can overcome that because we are live. Oh, sweet. All right. All right. So take it away, Norman. All righty, are we are we on? Are we on? We are. <laughs> right, We're then. on. So, hello and welcome to the MBS show, uh, reviews and discussion podcast. I am your host, Norman Sanzo, and well, we are here today to review the season nine. Uh, what do you call this? Finale. Finale. Yes. Joining me today is Silver Quill. Look upon my IRL bronies and despair. And also joining us today is Totera. This is my first time showing myself in public. Don't look at me. I'm hideous. <laughs> oh, you look Just good. Just focus on Pokeballs. <laughs> That's okay. Remember, BronyCon, I got your great ball right here. <laughs> oh, dear. So, anywho, um, before we hit into the review, uh, first impressions are, sorry, um, do I need to read the synopsis? Because I feel like I do need to read the synopsis for a bit. Read the synopsis. It's All part right. of the fun. All Set right, this. Yeah. All right. So, uh, in this first part, Queen Chrysalis and Lord T-Rex and Cozy Glow unleash their u- unified might on Equestria, and it's up to the main six to save the kingdom. Um, there's a part one, so I'm, f- I have a feeling that they're not going to do great. So, first impressions <laughs> are in order. Silver, what do you think? Well, they, they have to save the kingdom, and they fail. That. I mean, but sorry. Uh, okay. But first, I'll do this called the ending of the end. I think that's uh, that's to be expected. Oh, uh, this Silver. is. Uh-huh. Sorry, uh, the people on the YouTube uh, channel channel they say they can't hear you. They can't hear. Hmm. Hmm. Microphone. So uh, while Silver audio? is trying to fix his Curses? audio, Tara, what about you? Well, I really like this. I mean, I don't understand what the whole uh, thing was with people attacking. um, I forget the guy's name. But I don't know what the whole point of attacking was. I mean, I I I guess I could see why when we go into the certain scene. But in my opinion, I really like the series finale. At least this part, because I know there's a prologue, but talk about another time. But from what for what it is, I really liked how it ended with can, how the first part is. Can you hear me now? I can hear you. Yeah, I don't we, know if the can. stream can hear you, though. We can. Well, let's, uh, uh, I will pause it to the stream, then. Right. Can you find people hear me? I'm sure they can, probably. Hope so. Yeah, they can hear you. I'm listening on the YouTube stream. They can hear All you now. Right, then. So, Marvelous. Silver, Silver Marvel. you were seeing? Well, I was saying, first, Bert Norman, I must apologize. Uh, I had to stop my independent recording to make sure that it wasn't monopolizing the microphone. All right, you did. So that's just part of the fun of technology. <laughs> but here they are. They tried, they failed. We've been building to this for a very long time, uh, all over season nine. But here's the funny thing. We've been watching the villains progress toward the main six. This is Their progression is going to happen during this episode, not before. And so it's just, it's been a strange of sort of one sided rising tension and one side oblivion. So getting to see that come to a head, getting to see that now the culmination of the uh, triads battle and their goal is the start of the main six's goal uh, growth into an even stronger governing force. So it's like one journey ends, another begins, which I think is a very good theme for this episode. Hmm. All right, all right, all right. And as for me, this episode was a lot of fun going into it. Um, rewatching it, I, I see a lot of 
uh, what you would call this things that were set up from the beginning of the season and it does raise a lot of questions with how certain things interact with others because when you take a look see where certain things happen like um how to put this the rumors and stuff like they didn't really tell us they didn't really uh show us about it we kind of knew it near the end so it was <laughs> the the seat of certain characters came out of nowhere so that kind of sucks <clears throat> but anywho um if you guys have not watched this episode yet why not because this is awesome you should but i mean it's just like the avengers end game you should have seen this by now there's a i will not be held accountable for spoilers there, there's, yeah. a th- there's a theory about this because if they don't watch the finale that means the show's never end the show's never ending for them mm, that's like homer simpson mm. saying if i don't see it it's not illegal <laughs> Yeah, probably. Uh, but anywho, uh, if you not, if you have not watched this yet, pause here and go do so. Um, this is going to be weird because here's where I usually pause for dramatic effect. But um, welcome back. <laughs> yeah, so, we're still here. This is live stream. Yeah, you can't pause us except in the rerun. Yeah. But anywho, uh, we start off the episode with Queen Chrysalis in her unicorn form, uh, going up to a unicorn, talking to him. Uh, talking to him about rumors about how the earth ponies are keeping their stash away from the other ponies and the unicorn believes him and well he's being a jerk to mrs cake and with that queen chrysalis heads back to her lair where she meets up with the others we get to see cozy glow telling the group that she's done her part with the rumors and lying and lord t-rex here has been doing research on how to activate the bell and it seems that he has discovered the certain spell to activate the bell and does so giving all three of the villains unlimited power <clears throat> they've gone palpatine unlimited power uh, for me it's more like phenomenal cosmic power <laughs> yeah, probably probably but anywho uh, with that we get to see Grogar coming back to the crew, telling them, yo, I have a plan, but you guys need to work together. But the crew says, yeah, we're going to work together, but not with you. And turns the bell to him, sucking his energy dry and revealing that it was Discord the whole time. Say what? You thought it was Grogar leading you, but it was me, Discord. <laughs> Uh, and I'm going to pause here. So, guys, uh, Silver, what do you think, man? Well, I remember watching this, and my first uh, uh, reaction was, okay, what? Because, I mean, here's Grogar. I've been looking forward to seeing this guy who's hyped up as the father of monsters, the first emperor of Equestria, the the biggest of bad that all other bads look up to. It's like, Senpai recruited me. But uh, now it's Discord again. And you're like, oh no, we, I've lost my chance to see the Grogar in action. But he, here's the funny thing. We're going to get to witness Grogar's power at play. The bell and all the power it supplies is going to be expressed through Cozy, T-Rex, and Chrysalis. But how Grogar would have expressed that power is lost to us. And we won't get to see it. And that actually felt, felt disappointing. I was looking forward to seeing how Twilight would overcome a pinnacle of evil. But on reflection, I also thought, well, think about all I've seen so far. Uh, Frenemies, the summer sun setback. We got to see them learning to work as a team, them growing together, them scheming together. This has always been about the, the triad. Grogar was sort of a motivating force. But in the end, it was never really about him. And so in hindsight, it makes sense. But in the moment, it felt disappointing. Hmm, all right, all right, all right. And Tara, what about you? Okay, well, for me, when I first saw this, I was like, what? It was Discord the whole time? And in the back of my mind, I didn't really think, like, oh, I'm kind of disappointed. Because I first got into MLP through this generation, so I don't know much about Grogar in the past. 
but also too because I've been watching it since season because I got into it at season two, so I kind of have to go back. But then when I saw Grogu, I'm like, "Ooh, this guy looks interesting." And then I see like you know he's the father of monsters, the master of like you know the big villain. So I'm th- thinking, oh, this is going to be great. But then start raising questions where it's like, wait a minute, the- Gogar wants the bell, but yet when they hide it, you think he would sense the power of his own bell when they were hiding it. And I've, I talked about this when we talked about frenemies in the past, because it's like, he's the father of monsters. He made these guys. So wouldn't he know that they're trying to turn his back against him? But then Lord, the- all of a sudden we see that's discord so it's like okay makes sense because discord didn't actually make them yeah he's pretending to be grogar but he's not the real grogar and we see too how powerful grogar can actually be where the discord's chaos magic is gone i mean sure t-rex ate it but his magic just taken away and it could be cast on someone else if it wanted to be and discord just loses power completely where he has to walk run away instead and yeah. I can see why people are upset because I was upset myself because I was like, oh, but I was kind of looking forward to see this big villain and see how Twilight and the main other main six would handle him. Mm-hmm. I, I remember something that you said, Silver, in a previous episode. Uh, what was it? The the one where they were looking for Grogas Bell. Uh, no, in Frenemies? Yeah. Um, this, uh, sorry, Grogas said that the, he doesn't trust them at all. But near the end, he kind of dismissed them and trust them, something like that? Like, what, what you mentioned He's... there, stuck. Well, I, I'm glad to view. I say a lot of things in these podcasts, including wee you, wee you, wee you. <laughs> and, and not to mention you talk uh, Japanese or North Kauai thing. <laughs> oh, come in the side. <laughs> but, so I say a lot. I appreciate it if anyone actually remembers what I say. Uh, but yeah, he, he dismisses them. This is this is Discord shining through. Uh, well, okay, shining might be the wrong word, but it is Pat and Discord. He thinks he's the only one who can scheme. He thinks he's the only one smart enough to manipulate. It never crosses his mind that others may be playing him. And that's probably his greatest weakness. True, 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 true. But let's carry on. Although, it's very good. Well, actually, before you do, Norman, I do, I do just want to ask, you mentioned earlier that Earth Ponies were hiding a secret stash. Um, they, they were hoarding the I'm, crops. <laughs> okay, I was because well, you know, I'm not against if if the Earth Ponies want to do that kind of farming, but yeah, did you bring it up for me? Everyone? I swear, <laughs> it's it's all on uh, Terra. It's all on Terra. It's all on Terra. Oh, Terra! Is your is your OC really a mo- mobile factory? <laughs> no. You know, take the edge off. No, just because he has a tree on his back does not mean that he carries that kind of stuff that we know of. Ooh. New OC confirmed. <laughs> so anywho, I'm gonna carry on. So in <laughs> the next <laughs> in the next scene we see Twilight in the Royal Throne Room getting ready uh to ascend to rule Equestria. Uh she calls on Spike, telling him that yo Spike, I have a new position for you. I just made it up and it's called the Royal Advisor. Uh you've been with me for a long time now. Here, here's a medal or whatever it is. I really want you on my side. They hug it out, tears are shed, and they head off to see the other, I'm sorry, the other ponies, her friends. So, talking about her friends, we see the street of Cantalot, Bear and Baron. Uh, Fluttershy and Rarity head to a store where they're going to pick something up for Fluttershy, sorry, Pinkie Pie, but it seems that the store is empty, and the Earth Pony vendor doesn't really want to sell anything to them at all except a rotten potato. So they say that they'll head somewhere else and meet up with Twilight and Rainbow Dash. Um, Rainbow Dash tells the crew that, hey, um, clouds are clear, but somehow the other Pegasi didn't really seem excited in helping clean up the sky. And they seem to be a bit on edge, like something's going to go wrong. Rarity just says, oh, uh, we're going to change leaders from a millennia before, so everybody's got to be jittery. So this is normal, this is normal. And the whole crew goes back to Candlelight Castle. And at the castle, we see Applejack being somehow shadowed over by a guard pony. And we see that 
the guard pony thinks she might swipe the cutleries. Like, hmm, there's something wrong with her. And it seems that Pinkie Pie helping in the kitchen seems that there's a lot of chaos going in there. Like food fights between earth ponies and unicorns. That doesn't seem right at all. And talking about chaos, Discord appears. So Discord is here telling the crew that, hey guys, I have bad news. Um, Remember King Sombra? It was kind of my fault, I'm sorry. And I also brought back the other three villains. Yay! So who wants to go party? <laughs> anyway, I'm going to pause here. Tara, what do you think? I was first last time. Oh, that was Silver because Silver had to do sound check. I had to switch to you. Technical difficulty. Yeah. yeah. So go, Torterra. Okay. Go. Well, I can't really say much, but I mean, the whole controversy of uh, species being <sighs> racist towards each other. I mean, I know the feeling because in my world, uh, I don't like fire types and water types don't like me. So, you know, that's the Pokemon world for you. <laughs> But another thing, too, is that you think that... Because uh, I love how Twilight, she, from her past experience of, like, panicking and everything like that, she doesn't panic too much. She's so like, oh, a lot of ponies are missing. What's going on here? I... Instead, she's just like, oh, because she's got Rarity there, obviously, to be the voice of reason, saying, oh, they're all nervous about a new ruler. And even though she's still kind of calm about it, as things get worse and worse with the guard pony being around Applejack and then all the muffins come out. That's when she starts worrying and talking to Rarity being like, are you sure this isn't because of rule of change here? I mean, there's also social distancing, so that makes sense. But you gotta remember, this happened be before all this happened. Uh, very topical. Uh, anything more? Maybe slightly inappropriate, I don't know. I mean, uh, we, we have to keep our distance if we are not healthy. But anyway, Silver, what about you? Well, this leads to probably the biggest debate about this episode. Discord's role in ruining everything. And basically making the situation worse. And also his punishment at the end. Or lack thereof. Uh, this is his, in my eyes, this is his version of Lesson Zero. He decided that he's on board with this whole friendship thing. He wants to do it, his, but his own way. So he's going to make a problem to help Twilight realize how far she's come. <laughs> this isn't too different from Twilight and the one it needed spell, except on a much grander scale because Discord's power itself is much grander. Uh, I forget how Dumbledore exactly said it, but uh, as I tend to be rather exceptional, I make very exceptional mistakes. That, But... Yeah, they, they have every right to be mad at him, and he should be, like, two feet tall. If anything, when he's making uh, excuses or justifications, you just dislike him all the more. But, but uh, as I'm quoting... Sorry, go ahead. Hmm? But as I'm quoting from other uh, media, I think I should also quote uh, the ancient one on the apparent tribalism that's forced its way back into ponies. We never slay our demons, we only rise above them. <laughs> You, you can, I don't think you can ever wipe out an awareness of some difference, even something superficial. You can, however, help people rise above that. Mm -hmm. But to me, what Discord was doing, right? Like he, how do I put this? His heart was in the right place, but the way he, that he did it was wrong. Like the reason he gave was, okay, I was just trying to give... Twilight some confidence in her ability because I see that she can be a good leader but just needs the right push, right motivation. And I think what, in part two, there's a lot I have to say about certain scenes, but when we reach there, I'll point it out. Actually, I do want to add, though, mm -hmm. I do like how Discord was kind of setting up for this part because I forget the name of the episode, but it's when Chrysalis, t and Cozy Glow are trying to mess up the Summer Sun celebration. And I also pointed this out too in the past one, but I couldn't say because spoilers, we weren't there yet. Mm -hmm. But now I can say it. I feel like Discord teleported them, like teleported at all of the main five in front of the, the triad on purpose. So that way they can explain their schedule, like the cue cards in front of them so that they can mess things up for them 
only for all of them to work together and to see if Twilight would freak out. But no, then Discord's like, oh, she's going to freak out. Let's see. And then she didn't freak out. And Discord's like, oh, she learned her lesson. That's when you see Discord up in the clouds saying, your biggest lesson is coming soon. Hmm. I like that theory, especially as it takes advantage of the pony's crippling lack of an inner monologue. And their strange need to expose it, like everything. The only way you could, the only way he could get more exposition out of them is if he teleported them onto the train. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because that dang train, it has some effect on the mind. Uh, so true, so true. But anywho, I'm going to carry on. So in the next scene, we see Discord explaining the whole situation to the crew, including uh, Princess Celestia and Luna. And I, I just. Re- <laughs> By this point, I'm just repeating what I just said. So, Princess Celestia just tears him a new one because what you did there was so dangerous that you guys are... Sorry, that you have not only condemned Equestria, but you shattered Twilight's confidence. And talking about Twilight's confidence, hearing that Discord was there to... Uh, be a safety net for them, crush Twilight's confidence in her role as a leader at all. So, with that, uh, Twilight strikes up a plan because, well, Twilight is Twilight and thinking that she can do the job, recruits the pillars, talks to Starlight, telling her to get the students to safety and telling her family-in-law to well keep guard just in case and we see that in the next scene we see that the villains are trying to use the chaos magic and it doesn't go well for them because chaos magic is really really strange and dangerous so they scrap that idea and prepare to attack all of Equestria at once well, not really all of Equestria, but some of it. So, anywho, uh, the first attack is on Cantalot. We see Cozy Glow going in and giving the smackdown to the guards. And let's just say the guards are hmm, not great. Useless as always? Uh, yes, yes. That's, that's, that's a good one. But you have to remember that Cozy here is an alicorn. And she's powerful? I mean... <sighs> Still overpowered OC unsubscribe worst character ever. <laughs> oh man, she's the definition of a Mary Sue. Oh man, but still, but still, um, Cozy Glow gives a smackdown to everybody there, and T Rex comes in hopping like the Incredible Hulk. And let's just say that he gives the pillars a well, let's just say that there's no challenge for him, nobody has a chance to beat him up like they're just weak and we we get to see well the coolest fight scene ever between uh, Queen Chrysalis and Starlight Queen Chrysalis heads to the school calling out Starlight and words cannot describe how awesome this is let's just say that this fight scene was done really really well the previous one was with T-Rex and Twilight, and I have to say that this comes in at a strong second or type for first in terms of the show's episode. So the fight goes as well as it can, but since Chrysalis is powered up, uh, Starlight loses the fight. And with that, our heroes here are overwhelmed by the villains uh, the, the, vi- the heroes tries to fight them but it seems that they are underpowered for the situation and with that uh, how do I put this and with that Twilight they're and, all doomed oh yeah but before Twilight uh, gets um, defeated by the villains um all of her friends tell her to run away and find a plan to defeat the bad guys. 
and so she does and our heroes are well fade into the light and with that episode one ends and episode two so i'm just gonna pause here and ask for you guys opinion so what do you think silver okay the three fights uh in my eyes they represent the three fights often seen in my little pony on the one hand you have t-rex who's always been great at the physical i mean he is the most brutal he's smacking ponies into one another tossing them around it's the kind of violence you don't wouldn't expect from this and therefore the dragon ball z fan him. <laughs> but uh, in chrysalis and starlight it is a magic battle they are fi- they rarely are actually trying to physically hit one another instead it's a magic blast that often takes a greater toll on the environment uh, and plus a great deal of it is starlight teleporting chrysalis to uh, all over equestria <laughs> Include the most remote region. Part of me was always wondering, why didn't you just teleport her and then teleport away? Does she know how to follow you that way? It's like tracking someone through hyperspace. <laughs> but uh, I, I think that would have been un- more hilarious if more frustrating. You see Chrysalis charging across the landscape, hear a teleport sound, epe- sound effect, and she's charging across. The- it's like, stop that! I will say at the end of the fight, we're basically Starlight is trying to do the really cool walk away explosion. It doesn't work out. But given that we saw that Chrysalis caught Grogar by hawking a loogie at his hooves, I don't want to know where those cocoon tendrils come from. Uh, yeah. I mean, par- par- part of me asked that question, but then I say, no, bad imagination, bad. Stop it, stop. Uh... And then we have the third fight, which is against Cozy Glow. And it makes sense for Cozy to attack Cantrell because t rex already had uh, an assault against Can- Conquering Cantrellot and uh, Twilight. Chrysalis has made Celestia Pinata twice. Cozy's the only one who's never gotten to try. And her attack is more comical. This is the play fight. Because while the stakes are high, the tactics are absurdist. She teleports the guards into the moat, uh, which shows she's smarter than Starlight. Uh, <laughs> she, okay, she drains the princesses of their magic. That's a pretty serious scene. But the main six's counterattack is to attack with geese and confetti and being kind of silly. My only complaint there is that they were clearly in the throne room. And then Twilight apparently told them all, hey, hide behind the throne. This will be cool. <laughs> So when we cut back to them, it's supposed to be this big surprise that they're coming out from behind the throne, as Shining Armor did back in uh, Sparkle 7. It's like, that, you, that doesn't make any sense. Cozy be like, you were behind the throne the whole time? Wow, it's not like I saw you go there. <laughs> but it's one of those things where Cozy's fight was slapstick humor, but it's kind of using the pony's strength to the advantage. Like Pinkie Pie uses her party cannon, Rainbow Dash uses her speed and whatnot. I mean, at least the main six did something while the guards are. What did you say, Terra? Being useless, as uh, always? Yes, yes. I mean. Say that critique for Caden's shining armor. Oh, God, yeah. But anywho, Terra, <laughs> what about you? Well, I. Because. Uh, you only saw like the pillars of a question you're fighting like flashbacks and then with the pony shadows it's nice to see them take on a new foe now I don't know if it's a foe that they're familiar with because T-Rex is a very old guy but we don't know how, if they were around when t was around but it is great to see them fight but it's not really the focus on them so that's why you kind of see them as not necessarily useless like they do put up a decent amount of a fight but you see when Shovel Hoof uh, Shovel Hoof? No. what am I saying? Rock Hoof. <laughs> when Rock Hoof is about to charge in at T Rex, because, you know, he's a big guy, T Rex just basically stomps on the ground and just knocks him out. It's like, wow, okay. Because, again, the focus isn't really on them. It's about them storming into Kanto a lot. And can't really say much about Starlight and Chrysalis, because Chrysalis, she's just so bloodthirsty and revenge that she just wants to zap Starlight. And uh, I know some people probably suffer from this when you're angry at a video game it's hard to focus <laughs> you can't hit the target when you're angry and that's pretty much what Chrysalis is doing she's getting so angry where she can't hit her target and she's basically telling Starlight stay still so I could blast you <laughs> it's like yeah that's not gonna happen yeah, yeah. 
But at the same time, too, with oh. uh, what what you guys said, I mean, with T Rex, his opponents were the pillars of Equestria, and they were no match for him at all. And Queen Chrysalis and Starlight, yeah, the power gap is too high. The one that puzzles me a lot is Cozy Glow and Princess Celestia, Princess Luna, and Princess Twilight. Like, you got three Elecorn versus one new Elecorn, and those three couldn't give a challenge for her? I mean, that seems... <sighs> but at the same time, probably if they had spent a lot of time fighting, Cozy Glow could have lost. But the other two came in to save her But That's how I look at it. <laughs> Well I, mean, well, I think the reason why they did the fights the these ways is because with Derek and the Pillars, it's more like physical fighting, which, I mean, a cartoon show for kids, that's rare. <laughs> but I guess for the Dragon Ball fans, Silver. <laughs> yeah. But and also, then, uh, oh, sorry, sorry. But with, with the three Alicorns on, versus one, it's true, but then she's also, uh, I have a bell, your power is uh, invalid. <laughs> yeah, but at the same time, too. You know what? The, this is what's written on the script. So no matter how much I say, oh, if they do this, if they do that, blah, blah, blah. No, no, it's not going to work. Oh, is, is this the Infinity War? Uh, I've looked at 8 million scenarios. One works. Yeah, and this is the path they have to go. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the puns are in the end game. <laughs> puns. So anywho, um, let's move on <clears throat> to part two. So we start off part two with, well, uh, the villains trapping the heroes in a cave down in Cantalot Castle. I'm assuming this is the same cave that Queen Chrysalis put Cadence in previously. And the only difference here is that uh, Chrysalis uses her throne to nullify the pony's magic. So the ponies here are stuck there trying to plan on how to escape while the bad guys here fight each other with who gets the power of the Elecon stuff. And well, while they're fighting, we see the main six trying to find an escape plan. Discord says, I'm sorry, I really had the best intentions. Let me make up to you by trying to help you guys escape. So Discord goes up to T-Rex taunts him and this is the first time that we get to hear T-Rex's father uh, who was it again King Vorak and yes. yeah, second time second time because he was in the comics oh in no, the mean, second sorry, yeah, okay. yes it was the second of the uh, feet and chip is magic which means we have continuity Awesome. So no, um, what I mean is, uh, this is the first time his name being said in the TV show. So that is pretty rare. So for people who got no idea who Vorak is, go read the Finship is Magic comic where he was featured in. So that's cool. Uh, let me see where else. Okay. So this got taunts T Rex and he <coughs> <laughs> he bites the bait and blasts Discord with his laser beam and Discord deflects the beam and shattering the gem in Starlight's cage. So she escapes and tries to do a whole lot of damage to the place, uh, giving her enough time to free the main six out of their cell and getting them to escape. So while the ponies escape, they see an earth pony and... Uh, sorry, a unicorn, my bad. They see a unicorn. Uh, said unicorn says, what are you guys doing here? You should go into hiding. Uh, like, I am going to hide in Celestia School for gifted unicorns. And the rest of the crew says, this is bad. Like, what Chris said was true. So let's head to the place where we think Twilight might be. And said place is Twilight's castle, Ponyville. 
And in Ponyville, we get to see a lot of chaos here, where the Earth ponies from all over Equestria, probably, gather and try to find a safe place. Uh, they fight for a bit and Fluttershy steps in saying that this is not right, we should work together, but the other ponies don't want to listen to her. In fact, they just tell her, you guys should do something because you are the hero. So they think of a plan where, well not really think of a plan, they think where could Twilight be because she's not in her castle and well, she's at the Crystal Empire. And I have to say that them traveling to the Crystal Empire in that short span of time is amazing. You know what's even more amazing? What? They literally were told, we're sorry, ponies, your princess is in another castle. <laughs> yes, so true. Uh, <coughs> but anywho, uh, they meet up with Twilight, and Twilight is going crazy, losing her confidence. Like, she is not having any of it like she says she's a failure she says she doesn't know what to do and why did you come to me because i fail you guys like you didn't even need my help to escape and the rest of the crew says like twilight this is the norm we are always in a bad situation and we always rise this i'm sorry we always rise from every occasion and uh, i'm gonna pause here because I've been babbling for a long time. Uh, Silver, what do you think? Well, I've got to start with expressing my amazement slash frustration at Shining Armor's defense because let's uh, let's go through this. The increased guard did not work, mostly because he never trained them to fight well. Uh, the shards that block unfriendly magic actually helped the villain. The Funny enough, the aerial uh, blockade of all those fans never really came into play. But what I consider to be the most absurd defense in Sparkle 7 was actually the winning one. They would have bested Cozy Glow if not for the intervention of the others, all because they hid behind the throne. Even though, again, they went, went, went in there uh, after already been seen. But I'm just like, ah! But now, now that that's all gone south... I, I love the dynamic between the three villains. Uh, a triad is three elements caught in a stalemate. They have no harmonizing force, merely the fact that if one attacks the other, they open themselves to backstab. So it's only because all three are on an equal plane that they can work together. The minute you remove that mutual animosity, the pony, especially Twilight, they are at each other's throats once again. It's, it's a steady stream of trying to outmaneuver one another. They're going to lose if only because they have no harmonizing dynamic. So, as for Discord and his aid in their escape, that's going back towards fixing the mistake you cause. To say that that undoes everything is... Sorry, this is not something you can just one and done. Uh, so that's going to be a much longer process for him. I do think, though, that the humiliation and abuse he suffers shows that he's getting a comeuppance, which in some ways temper uh, my frustration with. And then, this will break your heart. Sugar Bell is, is still with the apples and Big Mac is defending her. That makes me swoon. But Lyra is back in uh, Canterlot, not with Bon Bon Sweetie Drops. That just, ah, oh, we just saw the, this is their first fight. <laughs> first real fight oh no every relationship's got to go through it though. so and a final frustration i've ragged on shining arm in the past but that's because i feel they have potential to be more proactive and yet they're always just standing on a throne waiting for the heroes to come to them and help them they aren't the ones encouraging twilight or helping her reaffirm herself they're waiting for the main six to come in and I just feel like their characters are always forced into the sideline. Same as saying, oh, be on the defensive for the Crystal Empire. They already spent the season premiere getting captured and humiliated by Sombra. I think they deserve a chance to show their best. 
Mm, all right, all right. Um, before I pass it on to Tara, I just have to point out something here. So, uh, probably Silver, you can add something to it because, uh, when things are getting worse, uh, there's always a, <laughs> there's always that one thing that can get even worse, and that thing is Windigos. They're real. They're not mystical, like how the ponies think they are, and. Hmm. It seems that the Windigos are back and they are causing trouble. We get to see certain ponies rise up to the occasion and we also get to see Sandbar's parents. That's cool. And yeah, let's just say that things are getting worse. So anything to add to that, Silver? Stick around Equestria long enough and I realize that any myth will prove true. Daring Do was a real person. Aoi Zodal was a real being. Grogar was not just a terrible myth in history. Uh, the, I the idol of Boreas was real. So on, so forth. Windigos are real. I, I worry for the ponies' collective imagination in that they don't actually imagine any. <laughs> except the worst case scenario. So Twilight's right in their element right now. Oh, true that. Alrighty then. And Tara, what about you? Well, I'm pretty much going to add on here what Silver said about Cadence and Shining Armor <clears throat> because I really want them to have some... I want to have them in the spotlight as well because most of the time you see them, it's just for like little small episodes or like family get-togethers. But when it comes to something more serious, it's always about the main six. Like I understand they're the main focus of the whole series, but I know in the um, one season opening, I believe it was season... Four or five, I don't remember. The one where Starlight Glimmer took over the village. And instead of the main six saving the day, it was these characters that we just met. And after they got their cutie marks back, they helped the main six and they saved the day. So what what I wish could have happened is that maybe start when Applejack tells Starlight, go find Twilight. And she goes find them. And then her Twilight and maybe Kane's shining armor, get a, a, any character really. And then they can retaliate, retaliate and attack the castle instead of always relying on the main six. Like, I understand that also, too. They're the, going to be the future rulers of Equestria. But I still want at least Cade's Shining Armor or at least a few other characters that are always in the background or on the side to have the mo have a moment in the spotlight. Because Cade's been messed up by Sombra and Chrysalis. Same with uh, uh, Shining Armor. Like, they got to at least fight back. They can't always be a punching bag. True, 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 true. But at the same time, too, uh, there's certain things like Starlight, just one pony. She could recruit them. Like this is similar to the episode where Starlight was going to save the other ponies. But I feel like having her do the job might not work well in this scenario here because the thing is, Star, sorry, Twilight's confidence is shattered. And you, she needs her friends to build her up, to gain, to regain her confidence. And I don't think Starlight is the best candidate for said opportunity. Or I don't think she might be the correct pony for the job. I don't know. She did a pretty good job in uh, school days. Telling while Twilight was moping, she gave her the tough love. You need also using her own experience. And here's the thing. I, I don't disagree with you that, that Twilight needs her friends to, to renew herself. They are a big part of her base, but so are her brother and sister-in-law. What would really work well is if Cadence was the one who went and got the ponies to bring them to Crystal Empire. Mm. That, would be, that would be a positive contribution without stealing the show. Mm, true, 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 true. But anyhow, I'm going to carry on because... Uh, this is going to be a short burst. So we see Twilight moping around, saying that whatever I'm going to do is going to fail, that this is terrible. There's never been a uh, plan that I did that works. Uh, we always had the elements of harmony to back us up. We always discord, blah, blah, blah. And the rest of the crew just tells her, yo, Twilight, we've been doing this for a while now. And whatever bad situation that we're in, we have always managed to overcome it so come on you have everybody here backing you up and 
Chris, sorry. Uh, and when Twilight gets her confidence back, uh, Cadence and Shining Armor and also Flurry Heart are in there and they want in on the plan. And Twilight just says, uh, no, you guys stay here as the last line of defense because whatever happens, we need your... Well, Cozy Glow will be the future ruler of Equestria or something like that. And uh, Flurry Heart, not Cozy Glow. Oh, my bad, sorry. <laughs> Norman, you joined the dark side here. Oh, you, you all heard it. Norman has turned on Equestria. My bad. Like, For I, shame. I'm bad with pony names. But anywho, um, guards attack. Oh wait, no, they're off. <laughs> yeah, they're useless. But, but anywho, um, here's what I want to say. Like I've been holding this for a while now because while Twilight beats on herself that I'm the worst, uh, we always needed um, help from the elements and whatnot. But remember the movie? Unless uh, that's non canon. Yeah. There, there, there was. Well, it was canon, right? Technically, it is. So yeah. she did all that without the elements at all. She had a friends. Like she could have done it. Like whatever she said was countered by the movie. Like Twilight, you're great. You didn't need the safety net from Discord. You think Discord called in the Storm King? Coulda. <laughs> Well, maybe, just maybe, she's probably she'd probably like that, just in case the people didn't see the movie. Because I know, and after the movie, there was the season opening where they mentioned that all the places they've been to and what they went through. You know, basically recapping the movie for the people who haven't seen it. So maybe that's why she was like that. Yeah. Just, just, I'm just stating a reason. I don't know if it's true or not, but that's just the way I see it. True, probably. But I, I feel like the experience that Twilight had during. The movie was kind of lost here because she she failed there because she thought that friendship sucks. But no, friendship was the thing that got her through. And her friends were there to back her up. She even made new friends, new allies. And this here like says like whatever you learn from your past experience doesn't count until she gets the boot from her friends. But still, that's I feel like they're just not acknowledging the movie. Well, Twilight isn't because Twilight is in a very real state of depression. Uh, and you don't, you aren't able to always fully take stock of your life when you're under the assault of your own emotion. So you're right that she is ignoring what has come before, but at the same time, that is a very relatable flaw that we all indulge in. We don't always take our past experiences into account. And sometimes we need someone to give us a good, a good talk to let us, remind us, hey, remember this? Remember that? Remember? <laughs> Exposition. Exposition. <laughs> but uh, also, you ju just got me thinking. Did did Discord call in the storm? <laughs> oh, God, he could have gone back in. He could have <clears throat> gone back in time, turned himself into an Ursa Minor or Major, swiped off a young filly's horn and guided her on the path of the Storm King, thereby bringing it to Equestria to test Twilight. Illuminati firm. Oh, God, no. That would be let's... pretty pretty dark of Discord, though. Let's hope not. Let's hope not. Anywho, let's carry on. So we see the villains uh, planning on what to do next because, well, they have to do something. T-Rex here says we should deal with the... Uh, what you might call this windy ghost while chrysalis wants them around because well they could provide a good distraction and cozy glow doesn't really want to do anything because it's too cold until she spots the main six out there and well this is going to be fun because they're going to have a really good fight so they approach the ponies and say are you going to give up now no okay i'm gonna bless you I'm firing my laser. <laughs> Twilight teleports the group to a safe spot and they plan uh, Twilight, Rainbow Dash and Pinkie Pie be the distraction while the rest of the group uh, tries to get the bell. And this here is pretty awesome. I just wish that Twilight and T-Rex Part 2 could have happened here, but nah, not really. So while they're fighting, Queen Chrysalis noticed that they're not really fighting us. They're kind of 
being a nuisance, being a distraction. And notice that, hey, the others are trying to steal the bell. Stop them. And stop them, they do. So before uh, they could, well, run away or anything, Queen Christus grabs Spike and says that, uh, surrender now or the dragon gets it. And they do. And well, let's just say that their time is almost up. The villains collect their powers and bless the heroes, but somehow there's a shield protecting them. The group says, oh, Twilight, that's awesome. That's a really one powerful shield you have there. But she says, this is not me. What's going on? And we see up on the hill, the heroes. Sorry, not the heroes. The allies that they had up on the hills, supporting them. And with that... Which is heroic. Yeah, true, true. And with that, we have a pretty awesome or pretty good fight scene with the other ponies or other creatures also on. So, uh, I'm not going to go through this fight. You can go watch it yourself. But let's just say that uh, Yak Smash is awesome. Very much imagine Endgame in the pony fandom. <laughs> true, 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 true. So, anywho, uh, the main six are brought to the top of the hill where Twilight asks, how, how are you guys here? What, what happened? And we get a recap of, well, the student six where they tell every pony creature about, well, friendship and stuff. And like I mentioned before, this is kind of long, so go watch the episode himself because all of the creatures, all of the, uh, what you call these ponies, tell them the value of friendship. And yeah, with that, everybody gathers around and works together to defeat the villains. And let's see. Um, I'm going to pause here. So, uh, Tara, what do you think? Well, I really like how it all goes down because, I mean, first off, you know, Chrysalis, Tyrek, and Kozigo, they just like, oh, yeah, you know, we'll just easily blast them. And they, oh, my God, they missed. And then when Twilight thinks of a plan, it's like Rainbow Dash, uh, Pinky, you're with me. And then they're thinking, oh, we're going to get the bell because, you know, they're the hardcore ones, the ones that always go into the action. It's like, nope, we're the distraction. The side ones are going to get the bell. So it's like, finally, Applejack and Pinky and Flush are going to do something more dangerous instead of just being a distraction. <laughs> and, I mean, can't really say much about, uh, you know, I mean, it's nice to see Tempest actually in the show instead of in the movie or Fizzle Pop. And I just like how this whole scene just reminds me of Avengers Endgame, but in Equestria. <laughs> <laughs> true, 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 true. And Silver, what about you? Well, me and Master Code got, or sorry, Master Code and I got in a fight <laughs> over references. I'm like, yeah, it's Avengers Endgame. No, it's two towers. <laughs> Lord of the Ring. So, you know, pick your grand reinforcement. It's always a fun sight to see. Uh, backing up just a little to where Twilight says, you know, Flurry is the future if we fail. There's this weird motion by Flurry where she just sort of lifts a hoof and points. It's almost like, I, I look at this and I think, is she saying, yeah, go on, I got the rest. <laughs> Thinking Metal Ocul go forth and die. Do it. So, <laughs> that was just a, a weird chest. Uh, <laughs> Chrysalis, in my eyes, is channeling all the rage of every fly that had its swept off by a sadistic child it's like that nah, yeah yeah here i'm gonna do it to a dragon <laughs> even a dragon fly we're going full dragon oh boy dragon dragon rip the dragon <laughs> all right then chrysalis z uh okay but uh the fight grand fight but it's so gratifying to see pony the supporting creatures all come together Way back in winter wrap-up, Twilight made the assertion that working together, ponies can achieve anything. But in every season finale, there has been a magical intercession. Uh, the elements of harmony, cadence and shining armor's love fuel shockwave, uh, rainbow power. It's very rare that the ponies have actually worked together to achieve the end result. 
So in a way, this episode is a very long-awaited fulfillment of one, not just relying on six ponies to solve all the world's problems, but rather to see them inspire their neighbors, uh, both within and without Equestria, and to see them all come together to achieve things that even though no, you could argue that with Grogar's Bell, they could uh, curb stomp any army, but a combined army practicing their best, strength, best strengths, such as the axe stomping the ground to, uh, to shake them off balance. They're equal to Grogar, no, sorry, Grogar Tirek, as he did with uh, Rock. So it's fun to see that. It's fun to see that culminate, uh, take part. And it was the most satisfying moment of the episode. And as uh, Torterra pointed out, is also the scene of, we can't afford these voice actors or have a cameo. <laughs> true, true. Uh, boys. But anywho, I'm going to speed things up because, well, after this, uh, Twilight noticed that, okay, everybody's at their limits, so she will have to take up the mantle to finish this. So she does the whole magical speech and she gathers the, well, pillars, mentors, discord, and says that uh, without the uh, elements of harmony, Sorry, um, the elements of harmony has always been within us uh, from the past to the present and the future. So she picks up the pillars, the pillars should bring the powers, the young six should bring the powers to Twilight, and the main six plus Spike should rainbow powers to Twilight, where Twilight does the whole, okay, I'm going to use rainbow blast to get rid of the uh, Windigos, and I'm going to depower you with my um, rainbow beam and destroy the bell and all of the villains lose their power and it seems that well before the villains could enact a counter attack they are smooshed by cupcakes oh no and chocolate rain it seems that chaos magic has entered Pinkie Pie and Pinkie Pie, uh, yeah, it's a bit too much for her. Discord gets back her, sorry, Discord gets back his magic, and things are back to normal. So, Celestia and Chris, sorry, Celestia and Luna can't think of a worse punishment for the villains, but Discord just says, yo, remember what you did to me before? How about you doing it to them? And can I help? And yeah, the three of them collect their powers and turn the villains into stone. Yes. So, with that, we get to see Princess Celestia being proud of Twilight and her achievements. And she is ready now to ascend to the throne. But before Twilight a sense she's going to postpone it because well the castle's broken there's a lot of guests on the guest list now and well twilight says that okay i'm going to take a break because this has been very traumatic and you know what me and my friends are going to donut joe's to have donuts so yeah i'm going to see you guys later and they have a nice chat about they come this far and with and because of friendship and stuff and episode ends. So, I'm... Yeah, episode ends. So, Silver, what do you think? Well, of all these events, well, clearly the biggest point of debate is the punishment inflicted on the triad. But I'll, I'll cover that in a sec. There are some very positive things. Twilight's speech with, with the past, present, and future protectors of Equestria. This is a trinity at play. I talked about a triad. It's a power balance that is held by basically a stag held to stagnation trinity is the divine dam it's being able to interact with others and grow without fear of losing yourself and we see that in the pillars who are the beginning the uh main six who are the middle and the student six who are the end of one story and the start of another they they flow into one another they grow it's a sign of a very healthy balance and as the show is very very often emphasized harmony i love the uh i love the contrast between the triad and the trinity of powers uh 
I do not love the idea of Pinky having chaos powers. I saw this like, <gasps> just, uh, <laughs> I was like, nope, all my nope. I'm pretty sure the, the whole fandom froze in fear, <laughs> but. I read the comics. I know where this can go. But then we reach, okay, so Discord can no longer say, I don't turn ponies to stone. Some people have pointed out that while Celestia and Luna's magic blasted the giant cupcake, it was Discord's lightning that conducted the petrification. I don't know if that's true, that if it wasn't a combined power. But the big thing, Chrysalis and T-Rex don't get uh, much sympathy. But people have reacted with very real horror to the idea of petrifying a child, if that is what Cozy Glow is. <laughs> I I'm not sold on the idea that she is a child. But at the same time, I can argue like 50 points for and against why she is or is not. But uh, here's my thing. Ultimately, in a very real absence of information, I think they petrified an attempted murder. She was fully conscious of her actions, fully willing to commit them. And even that terrified expression she has at the end might just be a another attempt at playing on your sympathy to weasel out of it. I was not horrified, mostly because, to me, Cozy is not an innocent child. See, she is something very different. All right. All right. And yep. Tara, what about you? Oh, I mean, Silver basically explained most of it very well. Me, I'm just theorizing at this point, but after the rainbow powers, they took away all the magic. You see Grogar's belt fall off to the side, like kind of rolling down the hill. And even though it's never addressed again, it makes me wonder, the bell is still there. Like, is it just a useless little bell? Or is there some sort of still magic there? Like, maybe Grogar's spirit is in there. And another thing, too, that I'm also curious about is when they turned Discord to stone, it was Celestia and Luna with the Elements of Harmony. But now, it's Celestia, Luna, and Discord turning them to stone. Which makes me wonder, too, is that because Discord was able to break out of stone later on, and they reformed him. Now I'm theorizing here again, is that maybe that the Discord helped them out and be together forever because he said that he he said that maybe in the season ten comics, maybe just maybe they will break out, and while they break out, maybe Grogar's spirit might be in the statue with them because they basically harness his powers, and even though it got taken away, there might be a little fraction of it. So maybe Grogar might still be in there, and maybe they'll form up together and be like, okay, we're with the real Grogar. But again, I'm just guessing here. But in the, all in all, though, I liked how this ended. <laughs> all right, all right. Because even the ending, too, where they're in Donut Joe's, it reminds me of the ending of season one. Yeah, that, that's a nice touch. And, well, I, I hmm. should have said final thoughts, but eh. So, Silver, final thoughts? Final thoughts. Well, I'm not going to say that this was a flawless ending. You guys have seen me being, re the joy of being on camera, I can be very physical. <laughs> and expressing my frustrations. But uh, there were things that I wish could have been altered to give characters a better showing. But by and large, I really love seeing the culmination of the more positive messages of this show come together and having some pretty awesome battles, great number of cameos, and a sense that it's not... They aren't saying all problems are done forever. This is the end of one era and the start of a new one. And the story does not end. We just are saying goodbye right now. Until the season 10 comics, of which I have great hopes. Oh, true that, true that, true that. And Tara, what about you? Oh, I really like this. I mean, again, I can understand why people were upset at some points. But in the end, I still liked it. I liked the lesson, how they, sh they when Ty was freaking out, it's like, hey, we've been through ups and downs. Nothing is perfect. You'll always face problems, but we'll take it head on together. And then they face that problem, and then they find out that, you know, the elders of the harmony were just a symbol of their friendship, but it finds out that's inside them the whole time. And I like that. I like how some episodes they point out a good lesson and that nothing is going to be perfect in this world. You'll always face some problems. All right, all right. All right. And as for me, this episode was <laughs> a lot of fun. I do like the whole scene where the opponents are fighting. And the lesson here was pretty awesome because... Uh, you don't you don't need some magical doohickey to defeat the villains. It sounds kind of hokey, but it's always been inside of you the whole time. And with the elements of harmony, it does make sense. But with that, um, episode ends, and 
series almost ending. So if you guys are wondering why are we not covering the epilogue, uh, let's just say that we don't have much time here. <laughs> well, in some ways, okay, this is a question for to you both. Mm. Do yes. you regard the last problem as a true canonical end? Or, like myself, would you say, that strikes me as more of a what if? Tara, go first. Hmm. That's a good question, actually. I appreciate I mean, you saying so. I, I like how it ends. Kind of. Because you see what happens, like, all the creatures again together. You see dragons, everyone together. And... The thing is, though, like, it actually makes me curious, but it is like, oh, that's, you just blew my mind. <laughs> but I do like, I mean, I'm not going to go full into details because we'll probably talk about this on our free time in a podcast. I do like how it ends with the book closing because at the season one, episode one, it starts with the opening. So, you know, it's telling the story. And then with the epilogue, where you see Twilight and everyone else there, and the sun's going down the book closes and I've got to admit I'm pretty sure that made I mean I cried a bit too when I saw it <laughs> and I loved how it ended that way I mean and I also too when I saw the last the this the last episode I was in a call with a couple of friends and everyone was just crying oh wow well. yeah and, but that's a good question though I'll probably get back to you on that when we uh talk about it yeah. personally yeah. for me I feel like the uh epilogue is it's a, it's a strange one because it's happening in the future and Twilight is retelling her story to her student. So, you know, honestly, I feel like it's canon, but hmm, I, I feel it's canon. It's just a retelling of how things went after the ceremony. And it's a lesson to Twilight's student that, that I'm not perfect. Like, I have my flaws. And because of my friends, uh, it either overcome or covers up the flaw that I have. And we try to meet up and you know, stuff. Like, that. that's safe for the epilogue when we uh, touch on that one. What about you, Silver? Yeah. Well, like I said, one, I appreciate that I blew Terra's mind because I am the bomb. Yeah. Nice. Hey, careful, though. When you confuse a Pokemon, they might hit themselves. Oh, no. Oh, no. But uh, how, how to describe this? You're right. I, the the ending of the, the closing of the book is this wonderful touch. I, it got me in the heartstrings. Uh, <laughs> though I watching Paleo and, and Jax uh, shed tears over it was, I think, even more emotional. <laughs> uh, but I always, I've always viewed the epilogue, the the last problem, as a great what if. But it's not meant to close down creativity. There is a huge gap of time between the ending of the end and the world we see in The Last Problem. And so I think there's a lot you could still add to this. I just don't... I hope people will never let this flash forward limit their own imagination. If they like the idea of a, a character going a different route or, or growing in a different way, there's nothing stopping you from writing an alternate future. And make that your own. And I guess that's my, my real concern. Not so much, is it can or isn't it? Is it, <clears throat> does it limit you or inspire you? That's the bit, that's the real question. And so hmm. I like to be inspired, so I view it as a what if. And I can always dream up other what if. Mm -hmm. All right, all right. So anywho, um, I, I think we have time for a bit of questions. A few of them. I, be I believe we have at least about 15 minutes all right then yes. so uh guys if you have any questions for us regarding the uh, episode or whatever else uh do pop in the chat there below we will look at it all right well we already got one question actually all right. do you think cozy glow will be in the season 10 cop uh season 10 of the comics and or be reformed uh silver i'm sorry i i, I heard you distort there for a minute something about do I think in the season ten comics who will be okay? Uh, Cozy Glow. Cozy Glow. Hmm. It is very much a possibility. I, I, my sympathy towards Cozy would likely increase if I knew more about her history. She is a blank slate right now, 
Although I will say uh, at Winnie City last year, uh, the voice actress of Cozy Glow was there and people were asking her, oh, hey, hey, what's the story with Cozy Glow? Where are her parents? That was a big thing. Where are her parents? And she said in her, in Cozy Glow's voice, stay out of my room. <laughs> and I thought that is so dark. I kind of want to see that in a comic and I don't. Oh, bad imagination. Bad, bad. Hmm. All right. Uh, I, I don't know. As for me... We, we got no idea how the tone of the comic is for now. All we know that season 10, the first comic is going to be us visiting the land of the zebras. That's about it. So it, it depends on the tone for me. Like if the tone is um, middle of the ground, probably we'll see it. But I, I think <coughs> not because the, the comics haven't gone that dark since issue one or more like i feel like the darkness has been toned down a lot even the cosmo really yeah i, I feel it because uh to me the most scariest scene in the comic was andy price's rendition of queen christus fighting with twilight or just queen christus in general but that's art not story but I don't know like, I'm thinking here and they have to have a really good reason to pull Cozy out probably to admit to her crimes or something like that I mean probably but the story has to be good if not we're gonna have another reflections arc on our hands hmm I know I stated my reason about me theorizing about the villains reform or the villains coming back with Gorgor's spirit and then maybe they finally learn their lesson. So I, I can't really say much. I already made my uh, thoughts. All right. All right. Uh, let's see here. Uh, this one says, why does Silver Quill think Cozy is not considered as a child? <laughs> well, <clears throat> this has been mentioned by a lot of people over the fandom, but are you all familiar with Batman the Animated Series? Oh, yeah, I remember that one. <clears throat> yes. There was Baby Doll, a character who was basically her body stopped aging, even though she mentally had developed to adulthood. Now, is that the case here? Well, I'm, it's that's hard to say because uh, Cozy is, is I don't, man, I'm familiar with my words. It's not a great idea to say, well, it happened in this show, so it could happen in this show. They're two separate shows. At the same time, an idea can take multiple representation. For me, Cozy seems more an adult because she is able to both twist other people's logic, uh, explanations, and, and rhetoric in a way that even a, ch a child is good at pulling on your emotions. She's good at deconstructing your ideas. She also demonstrates tremendous magical understanding to create a portal to lead to another universe and take all the magic with it. That is, a child usually is having trouble with just basic mechanics. Case in point, the Cutie Mark Crusader is trying to rebuild a table in uh, the Stair Master. No, Scare Master. No, it is this. <laughs> wow. All these masters. <laughs> welcome, welcome to the World Cup Master. No, the <laughs> Stair Master, they try to rebuild the table, and they do an absolutely pitiful job of it. But advance a little later in the series they've grown and they're now able to make floats as a team so they're gaining after cozy but even they can't can't uh learn magic on that scale cozy would have had to have been at this for a lot longer as an adult however the way she expects power to immediately default to her is something that i think a child might fantasize about and might expect she isn't willing to acknowledge her limited status. So that's an argument that she might be a child. It's There's give and take on and multiple arguments on either side, which leaves it a bit nebulous. So uh, I'm just going to say, in the absence of a surety, I'm going to assume she's older than she lets on. Well, that's, that's one way that's to look true. at it. Yeah. Uh, we got enough for maybe one more question? Oh, sure. All right. We, uh, what, here's a question. What do you think Luna and Celestia will be doing after retirement? Hmm. This one is going... You know what? 
I I do hope that we get to see what they're doing in the comics because uh, I can say a lot because we know that Celestia is a adrenaline junkie while Luna wants to get some R and R. We all hope that she's a gamer, but um, nah, probably not. Who knows, right? In the comics, in the co- the comics are bountiful with ideas. They can do almost whatever they want. Yeah. But honestly, well, I think but... we do get a preview uh, with the, the princesses just taking a, a vacation. Let me try and charge. I hope they'll always stick together because that's how it's been for them. Aside from Luna's banish, which was the start of everything going wrong. But uh, I also hope that they'll give themselves permission to spend some time apart. And who knows? They they're now in a position where they don't have to act the role of princess. And the funny thing is that over the course of the show, we've seen more of the Celestia's character behind the princess. Whereas in the opening, she was mostly defined by that. Hmm. I, I have a question for you guys. <laughs> so 42. <laughs> so um, we, we all here seeing the episode have an inkling of what's going to happen in season 10. But do you think that season 10 is going to be uh, similar to what's going on in the epilogue or is going to be like in the comics where uh, the how do I put this where season 10 is just going to be flashback after flashback or it's going to be its own thing for me I feel like the comics for season 10 because I feel like in the show it's basically done talking about the main six like you know unless there's new problems like you know maybe twilight has more problems when she's older maybe the council whatever can't come together i feel like the comics are gonna the comics are going to be focused more on the background characters like i know during the show i wanted to see zakora and like her home village or whatever because i want to see more of zakora because i like zakora but we never saw that show. But once I heard that was in the comics, like, okay, we're getting somewhere. I want to get to know more about the side characters. Prepare to be disappointed. <laughs> oh, oh, Norman, the pessimist. No, man, like, every time when we get excited for something, the fourth chapter of the end always has a rush ending. And this always happens in the comics for whatever reason. So, uh... Right, do you want me to play some, like, goth music for you? Maybe express your inner pain. <laughs> it's okay. What about you, Silva? I don't know what to expect, and maybe that... I won't say that's the, be- that's the best expectation to have, is none. Mm-hmm. I'm looking forward to seeing what they do. The, the main six can deal with new problems. They can flesh out uh, other characters... All things are possible because here's the key thing. I've always felt that the comics have to face a limitation that the show can contradict them at any turn, which it has several times. As such, you can really pour something into a story that could teach a lesson and grow, help the characters grow, but then it could be undone by the main show. Now that that limitation is lifted, do the creative writers have greater freedom to do something? And that'll be my biggest fascination. What will the characters get to? But either way, pony challenge. <laughs> okay, all right. And I actually, I have uh, one here. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not necessarily. Uh, I don't think it's necessarily a question, but I feel like this should be read, just so it can make someone happy. This is from Sweetie Bloom. Mm-hmm. She says, uh-huh. "Has Silver been throwing his balls at you, Torterra?" <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Um. I. I um. Uh, well, just, we... just out of context, just want to point out she means these kinds, not the other kind. People, get your mind out of the gutter. As you can see, he has plenty of uh, of uh, blue balls around him. <laughs> yes, I have plentiful balls, <laughs> and we should probably leave it at that before yep. the basket people are like, "Eric, cut it out, cut it out." Yep, yeah, yep. they're gonna be like, Wait, "What are these guys doing?" So, uh, so anyway, if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at mvshowgmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at MBS Show, and my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Uh, Silver, where can the good people find you? Oh, you're all gonna find me lots of places. First off, you can find me uh, later on this afternoon in the Lunar Hall 
where I will be talking about Law and Order Equestria. Building off the punishment of the triad, we're going to talk about equestrian justice and the, the conflict of what's the point of punishment. Oh, whoa, that's a nice follow-up. It, it worked out well. I did. I wish I could say I planned this, but nope. Uh, I, on average, you can find me on Twitter under MLP Silver Quill. You can also find me on DeviantArt under the same name. Uh, you can support my videos on Patreon or Ko-fi. Just do a search for Silver Quill. On YouTube, if you search for Silver Quill or After the Fact, I shall appear. And on, on Fridays, I'm doing Fulfillment Fridays, where I, where I uh, work on Patreon rewards and usually uh, artistic endeavors with a guest host. I just had a wonderful time talking with Dusty Cat last night. And I promise that while it's been a while since my last video, I am working on uh, Point of No Return, which features an interesting comparison that I'm hoping people won't be expecting. <laughs> okay. So I will look forward to, to that. All right, all right, all right. And Tara, where can the good people find you? Well, they can't find me anywhere else on BabsCon Online because this is unfortunately my only panel appearance, but I do appreciate BabsCon make uh, accepting the application because this is my very first panel appearance well at least online but probably after this experience i might head to babscon next year in person and who knows maybe you guys will see me i mean i'll, I'll be honored if uh, i got a couple of autographs signed you know i mean i never got that kind of treatment on like silver over there you know <laughs> oh no i'll ask for an autograph <laughs> but if you want you could also find me on my facebook DeviantArt Twitter and YouTube page under the name Torterra1324. You can also find me on my Patreon page and Kofi page under the same name Torterra1324. All righty then, all righty then. Also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date and Stitcher Radio and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PlayLive.com. So, what else? Yes, uh, if you would like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash MBS show. With your support, you get a week's early access to review, discussion, podcasts, exclusive and deleted content so yeah uh well we've been going on for long now and i guess this is a good time to wrap it up so i have been norman sanzo yeah, we got i am the silver now. quill <laughs> and i am torterra 1324 and we'll guys catch you next time with another for the episode of the bs show see ya adios have fun And now I need to actually let people know that we're clean. Hey, this is ending. Hey, this is the end. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. True, true, true. This is the end, my January friend. We're still, I should mention, we're still streaming, so save those profanities for just a little bit longer. I mean, we, oh, we, son we, of a biscuit. We, we never say nothing naughty like that. Push pa. Nah. This was a lot no. of fun, though. It was my very first panel appearance. True, 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 true. Uh, there we are. <laughs> there are so many panel rooms that it can be hard to find just the right one. True that. And three, two, one.